In this video, we're going to talk about on-demand revalidation in Next.js, specifically two functions, the revalidate tag and revalidate path. That's going to help us revalidate the data cache in Next.js on demand or in response to an event, whether it would be a user interaction, for example, submitting a form or a third party event such as a new content being published in our CMS and now we want to revalidate a specific part or part of our application or a specific path and then refetch that data so that we have fresh data. Now Next.js has three, four layers of caching and I'm working on a video where we would talk about caching in Next.js and all these different layers from the server all the way to the client and to the HTTP cache. But today for this video, we're going to focus on data cache and specifically on demand revalidation, kind of contrasting revalidate path and revalidate tag. We're going to demonstrate this difference with by building this simple application where we have fetched some users and we have fetched some to-dos and we can revalidate users, for example, without affecting the to-dos or revalidating to-dos without affecting the users or revalidating the entire path, which is going to revalidate both of them at the same time. Now, before we go to the code and actually see this example, let's dial back to the documentation and understand what it is that we're trying to do. And then we're going to jump into the code and implement this together. So inside Next.js, uh, we have a section called caching. It's um, brilliant documentation, by the way. Kudos to the team for putting this uh, docs together. It really helps you understand how Next.js works. And some of this stuff here doesn't even um, relate to using Next.js day to day, but it gives you the understanding behind the scene of how this works. So if you are into Next.js, I definitely recommend reading the docs. But on this page, as you can see, there is different levels of caching from memoization, data cache, route cache, or the full route cache, or the router cache, which is in the browser. Uh, but today we're talking about the data cache and specifically the revalidating or the revalidation of that data cache. Now there's two ways that we can revalidate data cache. One is time-based. We talked about this in the previous video on the channel where we talked about five ways to opt out of the static rendering in Next.js. And one of the functions or one of the features we talked about there was the ISR or incremental static regeneration, which is this idea of time-based revalidation where you have statically generated your site and then you want to revalidate the cache based on a frequent time interval. For example, every uh, 60 seconds or every uh, 60 minutes. Now, in this case, you would pass in a revalidate property to the next. So we extend the fetch um, options by passing in a next property and a revalidate property. Or we can use the route segment config options, which is going to affect all of the fetch requests on that specific segment. And we can export a revalidate property there. And this is going to revalidate data after a certain amount of time. So this is a time-based revalidation. Now, the second way that we can revalidate uh, our cache is on demand. This is, as I mentioned, in response to an event. It can be based on user events, form submissions, inside server actions, or a third party. We have two functions to accomplish this. We have a tag-based function and also a path-based or segment base. So if you scroll down, you can see on the on-demand section, we have the revalidate path and revalidate tag, which is going to help us purge the appropriate cache data on demand. So let's go to these two functions. Let's just start with revalidate path. So revalidate path allows you to purge cache data on demand for a specific path. So you pass to it a path of type string, and that is going to purge that specific path. So it's going to revalidate all the requests on that segment and affect all the fetch requests if you have multiple on that page. Uh, there is also a second parameter that you need to pass if you are purging or revalidating a dynamic segment like this one that has a slug. Let me just make this bigger so you can see better. So if you have a dynamic segment inside what you're trying to revalidate, you have to pass in this type as page. You can see this in the examples down here. So for example, here, 
we are revalidating a specific URL or path. Here, we are revalidating a dynamic uh, segment. And as you can see, we need to pass in the second parameter. This is the type of path. In this case, it's a page. We could also have the same way with a layout, which is going to not only affect that specific segment, but everything underneath that segment or all the child pages underneath or segments underneath that as well. So as an example here, uh, when you're doing this, the page underneath this for slash slug is going to also be revalidated because we set the type to be the layout here. And if you want to revalidate everything, you would just go for slash, which is the index of your uh, site, and then layout, which is going to affect everything inside of your app, basically revalidating everything together. Now, as I mentioned, you can use this inside your server action. So this is in response to a user interaction, form submission, or click of a button. Or you can do this inside of a route handler. This is where you would expose a revalidate API route. Um, for any third party to talk to um, your app or your cache anytime that it needs to be revalidated. For example, you have a CMS, a content management system, a headless CMS, you publish a new post and you would define a webhook to hit this endpoint. And inside this endpoint, you could read a path, you could read a tag and revalidate that specific path or tag and then send a response back. And this is um, not based on a user interaction, but based on something happening outside of your app or inside a third party app. Now, revalidate tag is very similar in that we have to pass in a specific tag. We're going to get into uh, how we're going to tag our data when we're fetching in a second, but you, you can call this function and this instead of going to revalidate or purge the whole path or the, or the whole segment, it just goes ahead and purges whatever that you have tagged with this specific string. Now to add tags to your fetch functions, uh, when you are calling the fetch with the URL, you can pass in this next option. And inside of it, you have this tags option. It's an array of strings that you, allows you to pass in tags for this specific fetch. So therefore, when you want to revalidate, you can call this a strings or this specific tags. Examples here again is revalidating posts here inside of a route handler again in response to something happening external. You can read the tag or pass the tag that you want to purge or to revalidate inside of your search params and then read that and just revalidate that specific tag in response to whatever it is that happened. Now, before we jump into the code, I want to mention something that what if we were not using the fetch function? This is only going to help us tag whatever it is that we are fetching using the fetch API. What if we are using a database client or a CMS client? Now, for now, we're, we have this honest, unstable cache function, which is from next cache and allows you to kind of do the same thing of extending the fetch API by caching the result of this query that you're running on the database or whatever the client is in this case. But it also allows you to tag it um, with the option that you can pass in. That's the key for the cache, but you can also tag it so you can pass in options as the third parameter to this unstable cache. And one of the things you can pass to this options is a tag, which is similar to the tags array that you can pass into the fetch function. And it will be used to control the cache invalidation later on. This is still unstable, but it is going to be the way that we can also extend this functionality to where we are not directly using the fetch API. Now, with this out of the way, let's jump into the code and apply this in action. Let me open up this app and explain what I'm doing here. So inside of the app router, we have this page component, which is responsible to render our homepage. Up top, we have this titles and a button inside of a form hooked up to this form action or server action. We're going to look at the server actions in a second. But down here, I have the users component and the to do's component which are going to fetch their own data. Let's look at the user component. So up top here, I have this get user function. This is calling the mock API. I have shown this um, app before on the channel, but if you haven't seen it, mockapi.io is a platform where you can just create mock APIs, create different types of resources, and it is going to give you an endpoint where you can just fetch those 
uh, resources. So what I'm doing here is just fetching users in this instance or in this component. So I'm fetching the users. And while I'm fetching the users, I'm also tagging this specific uh, data with users. And then I'm returning the response.json inside of the users component. I'm calling that this get users function to get the users. And I'm going to render them down here by mapping over each and rendering the name and the email. Now, similar to the home page, I also have a form with another server action here with a button that is going to revalidate just the users. So we're going to use the revalidate tag here. Now let's quickly also look at the to-dos. It's a very similar component, but the difference is instead of the users, we are fetching the to-dos endpoint. So the resource we are fetching is different and we are tagging it with to-dos. So we can pass this a string to revalidate tag when we just need to revalidate these. And then down here again, we are mapping for each one. We are rendering these components and also a button hooked up to our revalidate to-dos server action. So let's go to our server actions and see what we're doing here. So inside of our actions, I've defined a revalidate user server action. This is a pattern for defining server actions in one central file or module where you can put these actions inside the app router or inside of a lib. Uh, that doesn't really matter, but it has to use this use server directive up top which indicates to Next.js that every function in this file is going to be treated as a server action. Now inside of revalidate users, I'm calling revalidate tag from next cache and passing the users string or tag to it and then redirecting to the home page. On the revalidate to do's, I'm revalidating to do's and I also have this revalidate all which is hooked up to this button that revalidates the whole path. This is not calling the revalidate tag, instead it's calling the revalidate path and I'm passing in my segment or my index route so that it revalidates everything here. Now obviously here I only have one page. These typically would be on different pages uh, but it's enough for us to get the idea of revalidating cache or purging the cache for a specific resource and keeping the rest intact. In this case users versus to-dos or purging them all together. So to see this in action, let me go back to the API and uh, what we can do here is to change our resources. So once you have created a resource here, you can just uh, decide how many you want to generate off this. So let's generate four if I can click it. Here we go. So let's go back to our code, stop the dev server. I want to run the pmpm build command to create a production bundle of our application and then serve it up using pmpm start to serve up the production build. So we, this, we see this end to end in a production simulated production environment rather than running pmpm dev or the development server. Uh, if it is going to work on the development server too because we are using the router cache inside the browser but to just make it as close as possible to a deployed application we're going to just create a build and then run pmpm start, which is going to start a production server. Let's just close this off and close that one off too. So we have four users and four to-dos. And if I refresh this page, we're still on the four users and four to-dos. So nothing is going to change. Now, if I go back to my API and simulate a change in my application. So let's say our users have now changed to eight. This is the best way that I could come up with a change inside of our data. And now, no matter how many times I refresh the app, because when we built this application, we only had four users and four to-dos. This is going to show four users and four to-dos. Even if I hot reload, which is going to get rid of the router cache, which is inside the browser, it is still shows four and four because we are hitting the HTTP cache, which lives outside of our application, outside of the browser. It's in the CDN, so we have four users and four to-dos. Now, if I go ahead and hit revalidate user, you can see more users are now purged and refetched, and now it's going to read the new number of users, which is eight. But even though my to-dos also were eight, if you scroll down here, you see to-dos haven't changed. So we only purged the user part of our cache because we tagged it when we were fetching it. So we can invalidate the cache separate from each other. Now, if I go ahead and hit this revalidate to-dos, you can see down there, 
I also purged the to-dos cache and refetched that resource, and now I have eight of them. Now, if I go ahead to just show you the revalidate path as well, so I've increased this to 12 now. If I go back and refresh the app, I'm still going to see the eight users and eight to-dos, even if I run the hot reload, I still have eight users and eight to-dos. But this time, instead of revalidating them individually, I want to hit this revalidate the entire path, which is going to revalidate the users, but also revalidate to-dos because it is using revalidate path on the homepage and this revalidates everything. And that's a wrap for this video, folks. We talked about on-demand revalidation in Next.js using the revalidate path and revalidate tag functions, which is going to allow us to purge a specific path or tag in our cache in response to an event, whether it's a user-generated event, such as submitting a form inside of a server action, or based on something that happens outside of our app, maybe inside of our CMS, that receives, that sends a webhook and we receive it with a route handler and then purge a specific resource or refresh a specific part of our application. We talked about how to tag our resources using the fetch function. You can extend it by passing a next property to it, we also talked about the unstable cache function, which is going to allow you to pass a tag for resources if you're not using the fetch function, for example, a database client or a CMS client. Uh, it is still unstable, so have that in mind, but soon hopefully it will be stable, and that's a way for us to also cache data and tag data if, if you're not using uh, the fetch function. Now, as I mentioned, I'm working on a video about caching in Next.js where we would talk about these four different layers of caching in Next.js from memoization to server caching and HTTP caching and the router cache inside the browser. So stay tuned for that video. If you have any questions, like always, hit me up in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.